vent press and I, by the way I think I have a I haven't confirmed this but I have a theory that it might be the best upper body pressing movement for a judo would a good weighted vest count as rucking or that's not so no it, it would yeah and I have some of my athletes that use them just for expediency or for whatever reason but you just can't load them quite as heavy mm -hmm. you know so there is that limitation after 50 pounds or whatever yeah. but no, maybe I mean, a little safer on the body just because you're yeah. not like leaning forward as much or whatever it might be right? it is uh, I don't do like uh, I don't move the pack around to the front much but I train like a, a big staple of our training is doing everything in four directions so um you know i do my weighted carries forward backwards even even move to the side mm -hmm. same thing with sleds same thing with everything else and uh because of something i picked up from judo training they do a lot of carries partner carries on the back on the front moving forward moving backwards mm, and okay. so i do a lot of that stuff i'm also really big on zercher carries and zercher marching so front loading is there mm -hmm. and then uh, front squatting as well i have a a saying that the uh the extensors are the tibs, the, tib the tibialis muscles of the forearm or of the arms, mm -hmm. and I think they're frequently undertrained. Yeah, the, the opening of the hand. Yeah, exactly. So I think the front, uh, properly, you know, full range of motion, the front squat is uh, one of the best things you can do Whoa, for that. Can you do that again, real quick? I, like, there's a there's some definition in your <laughs> forearms, man, that you don't typically see in people. Look at the top part of his yeah. hand. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. that area. Like mm -hmm. you don't see that on people. Yeah, I've. You can just tell. You do some. And you used to do some different type of training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fingertip push-ups, chin-ups, which, you know, everyone, I mean, everyone's pull-ups better than a chin-up. I mean, it's like anything else, change your grip, vary mm -hmm. it up. Front squats, I do a lot of stuff with my hands, clubs, and I did a lot of you know, years of manual labor. But I found that by uh, training the uh, extensors, jujitsu specifically, your grip's stronger, but more than that, the fingers just do a lot better. They're not so torn up. Your hand, like anything you connect your hand to works better, whether it's bench press. Yeah. So it's, you get the same, just like, you know, doing your tib raises for your lower body. You get your, you know, increased strength and stability through the knee and ankle, less injury. You get all that, all the same benefits, training your extensors and your arms mm -hmm. with the added benefit of grip. You know? And then a zercher, like, do you advise people to use like med balls and sandbags or you want them to use a barbell or? I use a barbell, use that as a baseline, but I think like anything else, you should change, yeah. you should change the load. Like, uh. I'm sure you get, you know, some people say like deadlifting is bad or good. Like <laughs> I, I don't understand mm. the argument for that because there's four basic human movement patterns. There's push, pull, hinge, and squat. And mm -hmm. I think to be a healthy human being, even if you're not an athlete, you should be able to do all of them, at least with body weight or some minor load. Doesn't mean you have to, your grandma has to, you know, lift a he deadlift a heavy barbell, right. but she should be able to pick up the laundry without pain. You know what I mean? So I think uh, the best way to do that is to vary the load. Um, I tend to focus more on the heavier stuff just because I prefer that. And uh, the way we train is kind of by taking the minimum effective dose of the maximum effective methodologies from each different thing and combining them into a more well-rounded template. I think most things get but, a bad reputation from all the same spot, you know, yeah. like whether it be CrossFit or deadlifting or squatting, it's uh, usually a case of somebody doing something they're not currently prepared for. Yes. So it's just yeah. people just overdoing it. Like, you know, of course, if you did a five by five and you, jumped into powerlifting and, and you never had any experience god bless you thank you <laughs> you never had any experience with that and you got yourself hurt of course you're going to be like well i don't think that that's a great movement and there's some people that have tried to utilize something like deadlifts for their sport and they're like oh it really slowed me down or but it's like well how long did you try to use it for how did you utilize it how did you yeah, load form volume etc maybe you were trying to do it in season and maybe you were trying to lift heavy too or like there's a lot of different ways you can do it well, things get demonized movements in particular which is weird the bent more nothing more than the bent press you know like that's an old fashioned yeah, strongman we bent never press? seen no. bent press and I, by the way i think i have a i haven't confirmed this but i have a theory that it might be the best upper body pressing movement for judo athletes and therefore have we good carryo it's kind yeah. of the origin of a bench press really i didn't know that yeah i so i do a lot I of one arm was. barbell pressing the bent press is going to be more you're getting you're adding some rotation to it so you're not pressing up, you're pressing yourself oh, down so here and you're coming inward and then lifting the weight by corkscrewing up. Right. I love doing that with kettlebells, but I've yeah, never yeah. done that with a barbell. That requires so much more stabilizing. So, Matt Brock's family, I hope you guys are doing well. Now we love meat. <laughs> <laughs> we love to eat meat on this, this podcast. True. We've this talked about it. Yeah, we talked about it a lot. That's why I partnered with Piedmontese because they have amazing cuts of steak, some that have a lot of fat, some that are a bit lower fat, but no matter what diet you're on, you can fit Piedmontese steak into your diet. It's fucking good. Andrew, how can they get it? Yes, you guys got to head over to Piedmontese.com. If you guys know how to spell it, say it with me. That's P-I-E-D-M-O-N-T-E-S-E. -E. 
Com and at checkout, enter promo code POWER for 25% off your entire order. And if your order is $150 or more, you get free two-day shipping. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Let's get back to the podcast. So I love one-arm barbell presses. It's a staple Ooh. of all my programming, even if you're just doing a I straight press. I believe it press. used to be called a bent press, too, to do both, right? To do bo- um, no. That used to be like an Olympic lift, I believe. No, I know there was an <clears> old continental time. lift. I didn't know that. Ended up being like a bent press because you, I think that's what people were calling it because they would take the weight and they would uh, hike hike it up onto their, hork it up onto (laughs) their uh, belt and then they would lean back and then they got rid of it eventually because people, there were some people that uh, were like our guests that we just had here recently that could literally bend over backwards so well Mm. uh, that they could kind of like cheat the weight up. I've never heard of that. That's cool. I've, I've seen what you're talking about on like some old school, like there was a wider stance. (laughs) Right. like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that. That's yeah. how they would do that. Mm-hmm. It's. Ugh, it might have even been part of powerlifting now that I'm thinking about it. There might have been an extra lift in there somewhere, which I think might have got replaced with a bench press. But I don't, that's pretty cool. Video, yeah, yeah. But. Oh, yeah. Is that Pobble? <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. Observe. <laughs> he's Comrade. The, he's the one to watch. Look at this mobility. I can't do anything like that. That's bizarre. Yeah, he's insane the way that, the way that he can move. Oh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a fan for sure. Yeah, but this is something real. Like I've, I do this with kettlebells a lot, um, but doing it with a barbell. How do you? How do you get the barbell? Up I just use a squat rack. I use, come under okay. it. I find my hand grip, like my shoulder. I step out and then press from there. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So, so in terms of your what you're thinking in terms of the best, like I guess, uh, pressing movement for grapplers, et cetera. Why do you think? Why do you believe that's a, that's a, it was more of an intuition initially, but then I started seeing some of the benefits of just one arm barbell pressing in general from mm-hmm. my own training, and then the uh, shit look at that wow look at that uh, the, the rotational ask God yeah I'd like Ooh. to that that's a goal of mine plates that's one thirty five yeah that's so that's my goal that's one of the next things I'm going How after you get into it oh you but, just had so it on watch side. and Seema, watch mechanically watch watch the way that watch the lift. Look at the hip, in, yeah, the hip engagement, the core, wow. while the pressing and the stability through the shoulder and upper back. Yeah, looks a little sketchy on the way up. Or actually, no, you're not. It's not sketchy. No, 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 like no. with the, his form, it's not. Yeah. yeah, and they say like I have, I can't verify this, but they say it's pretty easy to bail to bail on, you know, like an unsuccessful chuck it forward, probably, yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Peeps, we love bringing you all this fitness information, and we also want to help bring that information to more people. So if you could help us out, hit that rev subscribe button, and then hit the notification bell, and we'll continue to bring you the heat. And I won't whisper in your ear. (laughs) Talk to you guys later.